Hey, Storm Nation fans. Hey, Boomer Shine here along with Alex Hoskins. Uh, once again, delivering you some more great information about what's going on in the industry. This is part two of a 10-part segment that we're going to deliver to you over the next several weeks. Uh, last week, we talked a little bit about the elimination of balance holes and how that will affect ball dynamics. Uh, moving forward with layouts and making sure pro shops, hey, guys, just kind of dial in those PAPs, those tilts, the migrations, all those things. Kind of make sure you keep a close eye on it. But I think the big question that that's happens is, now we're going to plug some of these bowling balls. What does, what does that do to that bowling ball? Well, you know, we've drilled, we've taken some mass out. Now we're going to put some mass back in. Now, is it the same? No, it's not the same as what comes out of that bowling ball. So we're really going to try to kind of deliver that information to you today. So we'll talk a little bit about ball plug today. Density is a ball plug. Now, the USBC gives us a range of between 0.9 grams per milliliter and 1.5 grams per milliliter. So Alex, lead us in. Tell us a little bit what you see here in this uh, in this overview. Sure. So we uh, what we did a couple. I mean, it's actually almost been a year ago now. Yeah. Uh, we got a lot of different kinds of ball plug. Pretty much everything that you can find on the market. We wanted to see what the densities of those ball plugs were. If you look at this chart here, you're going to notice that they're all pretty comparable overall, regardless of what's advertised. So this means whatever brand of ball plug that you end up using in your bowling ball it's going to affect the dynamics approximately the same amount. Sure. And if you look, I mean, seven different brands that, that we picked up, uh, and this is all just standards in the industry. Uh, they all between 1.03 and what 1.14. So that tenths of grams per milliliter is not a lot in density. And that's the thing that we notice is when you do an average across the board, yeah, there's not much difference between all these uh, ball these, all these different ball plugs in the industry. So let's talk a little bit about how these, when we talk about ball plug and how it affects the RG. Uh, Alex, uh, tell us what we got going on here. Yeah, we'll go through each, uh, we'll go through RG differential and intermediate. So we'll start with RG. What you're going to notice here is we have six different supersonic bowling balls. Okay, so what we did here was we did a one inch difference in pin to PAP distances. This was for a much larger test of mm -hmm. ball motion, uh, but this will also work for our ball plug test here because we're going to see how the uh, dynamics of the bowling ball are changed with ball plug at different distances from the pin. So let's look line by line here. You're going to notice on the one by six by one, since that hole is a one and an eighth inch hole and it's on the PAP to drilled two and a half inches deep, it's only going to be one inch away from the pin in that situation. Correct. So we get a lot of different distances from the pin. So you can take a lot out of this. But take a look at uh, the switch grip thumb column there. That is prior to there being a balance hole, so no balance hole. You can see we're at about 247. You can see once we put that balance hole in there, we go up quite a bit, up to 248. And then when we plug it, you're going to notice that we get a majority of those dynamics back. It doesn't go back exactly how it was, mm -hmm. but it gets about three quarters of the way there. If we keep going line by line, you're going to notice that that's pretty much a trend mm -hmm. among all of them. You get about three quarters of the dynamics back. So it's not quite getting it back to exactly how it was, but getting pretty close. Yeah, because you look at ball plug at having that, you know, 1.1, you know, 1.0 to 1.1 in grams per milliliter. And if you look at the density of materials that are inside that bowling ball, the densities of those are a little bit higher, but you also have some of those that are a little bit lower too. So yeah. you have a shell material that's really close to what ball plug is, but then you have a core material that usually wraps a weight block. It's a little bit lighter in density, so its grams per milliliter is a little bit lighter, and so then you go back into a weight block that's a little bit heavier. So they kind of balance out throughout that, you know, column, I guess, throughout that hole, uh, through, through, through the depth of the hole. But yeah, just notice that the effects on RG, so we know RG kind of determines where the ball wants to pick up front to back. Notice that this, we didn't get a, we got about three quarters of it back, but not a tremendous amount of change. So whether the hole's in it or not, you don't see that much of an effect on the RGs right here based on these layouts. But we do have, some, we do have a little bit of a, a change. So let's move on to differential here. So again, we have these same six supersonic bowling balls. Everything's the same about it. We're just looking at total differential now. Let's start at our first line there. We can see that that hole was one inch from the pin. Uh, so we had 49 uh, total differential once the ball was drilled with no balance hole. We see it goes down to 35. That's consistent with what we've been seeing in the first part of the video series. Take a look at what happens when it's plugged. We go all the way back up to 46. So again, not quite back to the 49 that it originally had, but we are getting about three quarters of the way there once again. And you're going to notice on all of these, that's pretty much going to be the trend. And that does, you kind of hinted to it. 
it has to do with the density of the ball plug versus the average density of those materials that are used to construct the bowling ball. Correct, yeah, because you, remember the ball plug is going to be consistent from top of the hole to bottom of the hole, but when we do drill through a bowling ball, we know so we drill through different layers and materials and different densities. But I think the big takeaway here is that, like, if we look at that first one, that one by six by one, um, we put that hole in there, inch and an eighth balance hole, and it could be put in there by your pro shop operator or, you know, by your coach or whoever was so that we could decrease the amount of differential so we could kind of change the ball reaction a little bit, try to take some flare away. But when we plug that balance hole back up, the flare is going to come back up. So we're going to see a difference in that ball reaction for sure. If you look down through here, if we look at the 2 by 6 by one it drops to 41, goes back to 48. The 3 by 6 by one drops to 43, goes back to 40, 49. But we know the 4 by 6 by one was one of the ones that didn't change a whole lot from the, very, from the drilling to the hole in it. And remember what we talked about when we get those holes in that halfway distance between <coughs> 3 and 3 eighths to about 4, 4 and a half. We notice we don't change the differentials as much. And if you look at that down through there, that three, four, and five by six by ones, we notice that the balance hole did go up about six points on that five. But if we notice between the three and the four, they don't change a whole lot. So any, any time that those gaps are smaller like that, it's going to return much easier to normal as opposed to when they're in a more drastic place. And know that as a bowler, if you do plug up a ball that does have a like a pin distance around four inches and you're going to get not as much change to dynamics as if it was a greater distance or a closer distance to the PAP. All right, let's move on to our last one here, effect on intermediate. So we have some code X bowling balls here. What we did differently here is we changed the PSA to PAP distance. So we have the pin position in the same. So that's pin to PAP distance is constant and the pin buffer is constant. So we just wanted to see how that ball plug is going to affect that intermediate differential at different distances. So if we go through it here, uh, let's start at the top. You've got the six by one by two and a half. You'll see that when we had that switch grip thumb in there, we had 23 intermediate. That one and an eighth hole really increased it quite a bit. As you would imagine, it's right next to the PSA there. Mm -hmm. We gained 10 points of intermediate. We plug it and look, we get all the way back down to 24. So almost all of it goes back, but not quite all the way. Once again, you're going to see that as a trend uh, from all of these because of the difference in density in the ball plug there. And remember, once again, you know, we're talking about this is in an asymmetrical bowling ball, and you notice the pin above the fingers and the mass bias out, and you can see the different di distances as you look in those pictures from left to right where we go those different distances and that there is some minimal effects, and it does come back pretty close to where it was. Um, but remember, once again, that balance hole was used to fine tune that bowling ball. We're going to put that, uh, plug that balance hole back up, and we're going to lose a little bit of that fine tuning that we did with that bowling ball. Yep. All right, we'll go to our summary here. So, as we talked about at the beginning, nearly all ball plug on the market, pretty similar density. Mm -hmm. So, it's not really going to, mm -hmm. one ball plug isn't going to change dynamics significantly more than any other ball plug is. And if we do uh, plug it up, you know, you're going to get about 80, 80, 80 percent of that uh, change back that the, you, the dynamic change you made to the ball is going to come back to the original drilled state prior to a balance hole so you're it'll be about 80 percent back to prior to the balance hole so the size the depth the location and the weight of the bowling ball are all going to factor into how much effect the plug is going to have on the ball so 81 percent is just the average of all of those that we tested you can get up to 100 percent back you could get even a little bit less back it's just going to depend on all those variables, and that's kind of what we're talking about through all this, uh, all 10 parts of these video series here. Right. And remember, though, plugging that balance hole up can either have a positive effect or a negative effect on that ball reaction because the balance hole was put in there for a specific reason. It was put in there either to enhance ball motion or to, or to decrease ball motion. So now that that plug goes, that we plug that hole back up, that balance, that hole that we were trying to decrease ball motion a little bit, that ball motion might increase a little bit and vice versa. So take that into consideration, uh, consumers and pro shops, when you're plugging these balance holes back up for these customers. Definitely something to think about. So that about does it for part two. Uh, next week we'll move on to part three. That's going to be the limitations on drilled holes. So that'll be another interesting video. Um, do you have anything else that you want to go into today? Hey, once again, Storm Nation fans, we appreciate you tuning in. Always tune into the StormBowling.com uh, website and then uh, the Storm YouTube channel and subscribe, and that will kind of get you any updates that come along. You'll be in tune to what's going on in, in our world here at Storm Nation. So thanks again for tuning in.